What up, players? It's Wobas K back up in this mud, and it is so good to be filming again. Oh man, I've been working so hard, and oh, I'm so glad to be back behind a paintbrush. Today, we're going to be finishing our driver, and I kind of got started on the right side of his body just to show you what we're going to go with, and um, like how we're going to finish up the skin. You can kind of see the difference between the highlighted areas here and the other side just to show you um, you know you don't really have to do this section if you're just going for a base coat wash then you know you can finish after the first video but um, I'm gonna be doing highlights now and detail work and stuff like that so I got started on the right side and um, also did a couple of other things like I decided I was gonna go for the cloudy the cloudy eye look uh, you know when you have um, somebody that their eye got all jacked up and it looks like really cloudy and there's like a scar over it. Anyway, it's gonna be really awesome. So I'll teach you how to do that. <clears throat> and um, let's get started with the left side. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight up the gauntlet and I'm gonna be using Chainmail. Uh, as of filming this, I think they, they had just released the, um, the, the new paint range onto their onto the GW's advanced order website and I am really stoked, really looking forward to it. I think before I was kind of hesitant because I thought they were getting rid of you know all of our favorite colors and stuff but it seems like they're just either renaming or re uh, altering slightly whatever is already in existence and then just adding a bunch of stuff that hasn't been in the range this past iteration of it or um, or just needed an overhaul. For example, there isn't really a good pink color in the range right now. I think before they had tentacle pink and um, in order to get a good pink color, like if you want pink horrors or if you play Chaos Emperor's Children post heresy, then you would need to make your own pink by um, I, the, the technique I learned for doing horrors was doing a base coat of Talern flesh and then hitting it with some Baal red wash. But I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a pretty big color not to have. So I can see how they wanted to streamline it, streamline it, save some money. But um, I'm glad that they're bringing back in a pink color and they're doing so much more with all of the textures and dry dry brushing paints and stuff and I've been reading a lot of reviews from if you go on warseer.com or Bell of Lost Souls you have some people who had some some face-to-face -face time <coughs> with the with the new paints you're also going to be using your chainmail to paint up any metal pieces so I mean if you're watching this video sometime in like October or November and the paint line has already been out of course you've got your own and I'm working with my own now then um, I'm sorry but at the <coughs> <coughs> at the filming of this I am really super excited the thing with your chainmail is you're also going to be painting the corners of most of your other metallics like the bronze here just going to be hitting the corners to give it that give it that um, that shine, the light reflecting off kind of shine. It's easier for the eye to pick it up from far away. The first time I remember painting silver onto another color, I think it was gold, to highlight. Uh, I was using mithril silver to highlight some gold and I was like, why am I painting this silver color onto a, a gold surface? But then when you look at it from far away, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the, um, the visual effect, check that out, is really, is really awesome. It really helps your eye, especially like, check out this guy's boot, you know, from between the, the metal parts and the leathery parts. It's kind of hard to tell because they're both kind of the same color. The tin bits has that uh, metallic pigment to it, but really couldn't tell without the um, silver, this chainmail where it goes and where it ends, so. it's a little tip. <clears throat> also, Games Workshop is coming out with the new How to Paint Citadel Miniatures book. 
and man, I'm suck such a sucker for those. I'll probably check it out, and I bet you, I bet, I bet I'm gonna buy it, but like a lot of the techniques can be learned pretty easily online now by watching good videos like mine. No, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I don't consider myself <laughs> I don't consider myself any foremost authority on um, painting. I'm just showing everybody, you know, as I think all of us do that make tutorials online. We're showing the YouTube community how we paint our miniatures and um, except for our awesome paint job, I think he's he's at that point where, you know, he is really a pro. <laughs> girl painting like I consider myself just you know this guy with the camera some minis and some paint but those guys are the ones that that really are pros Splatten Studios General Splatten I think the reason you know why we Google or search in our YouTube search functions how to paint videos like this is just to just to get an inside peek at the workings of the techniques of people that we we like the look of their models so I wish man I wish online tutorials like this existed when I first started painting they didn't really nobody really put anything out at least that I could find um, I remember when I first started getting back into the hobby and blue table painting and mini wargaming were like the only things that you could find that had any kind of video content on on Warhammer. Today it's just so so much more um, exposed, which I'm I'm really happy for. Okay, so there's all the metal. Next thing we're going to be doing is um, taking our we're just really repainting colors that we've already shaded, so shadow gray for the pants. Uh, wipe it off into our wet palette. Yeah, the some of the, the dry brushing um, paint reviews for the dry paints seem like really cool. Like, it'll be, most of the people that, whose reviews I've read see, make it seem like <clears throat> you're going to be able to dry brush, like, almost directly onto a black and have, like, a pretty nice looking finish. You know, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about the paints because for anybody who watches this, like, later in the year, what if I don't like it and then I make videos about, oh, this new paint range sucks, it's terrible. We'll see. I'll make videos on the new paints. Um, but for now, we're painting ogres. <coughs> Man, I still got this cough that just won't go away. I don't like it. Okay, so that is that. Next I'm going to be taking some Calvin Brown and painting back up the uh, different leathers on this guy. So like his cannonball sling sling bag mm. my sling bag from a cannonball mm -hmm. so this little pouch you don't really need to do much if you want to go a little bit more a little bit lighter what you could do is add a little bit of bleached bone and I'm gonna be doing that in just a second 
so I'll show you on my wet palette what that is going to look like. But if you can tell, if you look at this bag right now, I'm just painting up what's not in the recesses of the top areas. I'm going to add just a little bit of bleached bone. Show you my white palette. So I had a little bit of calcium brown and bleached bone on, on the tip of my brush. And then I'm just going to put in some streaks on the bag to show a little bit of that stretch in the fabric. These just kind of follow, what, or what I do is I just kind of follow where the natural line of the, the bag is. There. Really simple, really easy step to do. Doesn't take like hardly any time. Found generally bleached bone is like a fantastic color to highlight with. as opposed to like skull white. Ta-da! <coughs> okay, so now we're gonna get onto the skin. So we're gonna use Talarn Flesh and either what I found was bleached bone or also another good highlight step would be Deneb Stone. <coughs> First we're gonna use Talarn Flesh though to go back over what we've already painted. And because this is a foundation color, we just have to make sure that we thin it down with water or or if you use a more fancy, fancy paint thinner. And I'm looking for the places that the wash hasn't really touched. The great thing about highlighting is after using your ink, your glaze, your wash, you see where naturally the the wash didn't go and that's where you want to paint the highlight because that's already naturally lighter. where the ochres really are such fun models to paint because they're just like really big beefy slabs of you know muscle and just such so much um, open space for for painting the citadel washes really um, dry nicely and give a great uh, texture and shading to it depth not texture it's just fantastic um, when you just have the base of Talar and Flesh, it all looks the same because, you know, the light is hitting just about everything at the same angles, but the washes really, I love how they <clears throat> just really work well for ogre models in particular. So now I'm going to mix in a little bit of Deneb Stone and I'm going to mix them on my wet palette here. Wipe off most of it onto a napkin so your brush is not overloaded. 
and go right back in. If anytime you feel like you use too much of the highlight color or it's too bright or whatever, um, what I found is really easy to do to help you out is just go back over your model with the wash that you used before. So if I felt like this was too bright, I messed up my um, my mixing levels and I used too much Deneb stone, then I would just go back over with some more Ogren Flesh. That should just about do it. Another great thing about the washes is that it evens out and uh, smooths out transitions between your highlight and your and your previous color. Like it smooths out the edges so that it kind of masks them. So if you feel like, oh, the highlight color works well here, but over here at the ends, I think I put too much where I shouldn't have, then just go back over it with some wash. And that will fix you right up. Okay, so <coughs> next we're going to add, or we're gonna paint some Mechrite red onto the base plate. Highlight that baby back up again. staying where I wanted to. Kind of painted on the center and then it and then it goes away in some weird little pattern. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. Well I'll keep working on the base plate. <coughs> So the next thing you're going to do is take a little bit of Chaos Black and paint in this guy's right eye. If you're using the helmeted head, you can skip this part because the eyeballs, I think, are covered because the guy's got a helmet covering his face and his eyes. And also take a little bit of, so you can see his right eye, I used Chaos Black, and his left eye, I used Skull White. What I'm going to do now is take some Skull White and paint a tiny, tiny little horizontal stripe to get the center of the eyeball pupil. Yeah, and don't worry if you um, don't worry if you go out of the lines because we're going to clean it <coughs> in just a second. And you're going to take your Chaos Black, Chaos Black and you're gonna do a vertical stripe right down the center from up from the top to the bottom. I think some people have been asking me how I do my 
my eyes for my ogres. And uh, this, is, this is how I do them. Paint a horizontal white stripe for the eyeball pupil. And for the iris in the center, just do a vertical top to bottom. As close to the middle as you can. And you're probably going to get it onto the onto the bottom of the guy's eyelid and if you do then no worries because you're going to fix it up right now with talon flesh paint right under the little baggy there and there you go <clears throat> one ogre eye the other one you're gonna leave white and use some uh, yeah. Igor. Are you back from vacation yet? Nope. It's alright, I'm gonna look for some gloss varnish to cover that eyeball yet later but um right now we're gonna leave it and I see a couple more shards of shrapnel that I missed so I'm gonna get my chain mail and paint over that but we're just about done with this guy now the last thing we really have to do to bring give him some give him some life is paint the um Paint some blood from all the shrapnel on his face and also uh, get some, some, some blues, some colors <clears throat> under his eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hawk turquoise and I'm going to thin it down a whole bunch. I'm really going to water it down. Ugh, oh, this pot. Gross. I just bought this hawk turquoise and it's already leaking all over the place. So you're really going to water it down and then you're going to get just enough on the, the tip of your brush and paint right under his eyelid. <coughs> and it's supposed to be really like a glaze on, which means that you're supposed to see hardly any pigment at all. <clears throat> and do that for the other side too, even though he's got the milky eye. And hot turquoise is such an unexpected color to see that, um, it's really going to draw your eye to his face, which is what we want. <clears throat> there. Oh, that looks so awesome. I'm so happy. Okay, so now we're going to get to work on the bottom lip. And we're going to be taking... Woohoo! Almost knocked over my camera. Some dark flesh. Watering that up. Look at this. Look at this. I just bought this like a month ago. Ah, look at my hot turquoise. Look at that. Ah, I'm going to be so glad. Speaking of new paints, I probably wouldn't have showed you guys that if I didn't have the new paints on my mind. Anyway, we're watering down the dark flesh. So just like we did with the hot turquoise, we're going <coughs> to give a little bit of a glaze to his bottom lip. I do this for all my ogres. So you don't want to really change the entire color of his lip, you just want to give it a bit of that reddish tinge. So it doesn't look like he's wearing, you know, clown makeup from far away. <laughs> just looks like he hasn't had a good night's sleep. And you see that his bottom lip right there. 
<coughs> this is fantastic. I give you the War Boss Tay thumbs up. Now we're going to take our, look for the appropriately named Scab Red or Red Gore. Either of those colors work really, really fantastically well. So I'm going to use actually Red Gore because I feel like this uh, guy's misfire, all the shrapnel popping out of his body happened fairly recently, possibly like right in this battle, so I'm going to just We're going to take your red gore and you're going to um, water it down and then you're going to paint around the entry points of all the shrapnel. Let's see if you can get in some focus. There we go. So you don't want to paint the red metallic too much. Or I mean, when we're talking about paint the metallic red. Oh, look at this nasty one over your shoulder. The great thing about coloring around the entry points like this is that you can really cover up any mistakes you made where you painted the skin tone, um, the metallic color of the shrapnel. Because scab red is darker, some of you might be wondering, well, why bother doing scab red and red gore? I think because scab red is darker, it's meant to be for um, for wounds that are older, whereas red gore is very much for freshly inflicted wounds. So now I'm going to be uh, coloring in some pieces of metal which you can color in are the ones that are at exit points. For example, if the shrapnel went in through here and came out the other side, then this side would be a little bit covered in some gore. So I'm going to paint it over a little bit. Because you've watered it down, it has a very <coughs> glazed look to it. So when it goes on the metal, it looks really, really nice. I'm also going to take my red gore and I'm going to paint streaks that go down over the wound. Streaks of blood. This is very uh, grim and macabre. McCorn on the cob. Oh, gross, look at that one in the shoulder. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red gore and um, what else could I paint in? Yeah, you just want to reinforce all of the gory details. So two coats is always better than one when you're doing blood streaks because a blood streak can end up being pretty pretty thin looking and you want that extra amount of body to the paint. So 
so that it looks like not just like you're painting a thin coat over the flesh color but that you're really using a brand new color on top of it. <clears throat> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, just looking at this makes me hungry for strawberry sundaes. Oh, gross. Okay, so there you have it players. This is our driver. He is done. Just about as done as he can be. Um, I think he looks great. I think he looks fantastic. And um, hope you enjoyed painting him. Here's his little carriage. So when we start gluing everything together, uh, we are going to put him on his carriage right about there. Which sucks because, look, he's standing basically right on top of one of the coolest things is the keyhole <coughs> for the for the stupid thing. Uh, so sad, but we've got him done. We've got his, his chariot done. Um, so I'm going to go on next to um, the cannon. You'll notice that I've already started painting painting it um, in Calvin Brown. Uh, so join me. I'm not going to put this up because I don't want it to be one of the options for the final uh, shot in when you choose what kind of picture you have for your YouTube video. We'll do this and I'll ramble on for just a little while. Um, it's coming along well. It's coming along really great. Uh, if, you know, if, you, if you don't want to have this standard then by all means just do a base coat and a wash. There's no reason that you have to subject yourself to all of this uh, extra detail if you don't want to, if you just want to get the guy on the field. Base coats, washes are just fine for table quality. For the War Boss Taste standard, I'm going for you know a little bit more. And I think in the end, it's gonna be much more rewarding. I'll be able to feel like I really did a you know pretty stellar job with them. <clears throat> so, let me know if you have any questions. Um, thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave me a comment, subscribe, hit the like button, all of that good stuff. We'll see you in the next one.